All right, there's only eight days until voters in North Carolina head to the polls to cast their ballot for U.S. Senate. As the particular race between Tom Tillis and U.S. Senator Kay Hagan is one the whole country is certainly watching. It's a very tight race and every vote will certainly count. Indeed, so each candidate has been using every resource to reach out now to people, making it one of the most expensive Senate races in history. And joining us this morning on Good Day Carolinas to talk about the race is U.S. Senate candidate Tom Tillis. Thank you so much for being here. Good morning, and Eric, you look a lot bigger on in person. <laughs> I look bigger in person. She calls don't me, she calls me small. Me that ego, she yeah. calls me small. All right, so you've got eight days to go. Yep. Uh, you know, you're in the home stretch here. What does the next week look like for you? Oh, it's nonstop. We're in uh, several different uh, stops every day. We've got a couple of days this week. We're in ten different places across the state. Just getting cool. the vote out, letting everybody know early voting's open right now. We want them to get out and vote early. Is it hard? Uh, you know, I, I know the the finish line's close, right? I mean, eight days away. Uh, are you ready for it to end? I am. I woke up this morning thinking eight, eight days, <laughs> eight days. and uh, tomorrow seven. So it's, you know, it's been a long road. We, we started this back in June of last year, and our first attack ads against us were back the, with the week after Thanksgiving. So I'm, I'm, glad to see, uh, I'm glad to see it come to an end, and we're very optimistic about our win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, we'll talk about the attack ads here in a few moments. I want to start with, with, you know, where this campaign began. You go back to the issue, certainly was about education in mm -hmm. North Carolina, teacher pay, things like that. Mm -hmm. Suddenly we pivot. We pivot to ISIS. We pivot to Ebola. Right. Uh, what's that change been like? Because it, certainly it's a drastic uh, you know, shift in, in the issues. Well, I think it's just an indication that people are worried about their safety and security, the missteps on dealing with the Ebola cases in the U.S., the missteps with ISIS, ISIS taking ground in Iraq and, and taking cities in Syria uh, and Iraq are, are things that are, I think, top of mind. So let's, let's talk about Ebola specifically here for a minute. You were the first lawmaker to call for a, a travel ban on people traveling into yeah. the U.S. directly from uh, the countries most stricken by Ebola. Where do you stand on that now? And as far as the quarantine go, you know, New Jersey and New York now calling for a mandatory 21-day quarantine. Tell us your position there. Well, you know, Senator Hagan was against it before she was for it. What I, what I really want is some indication that the CDC, the president, has this under control. And it... it it starts by making sure that we know people coming from the hardest hit nations that we're sending resources to need to continue to where they are and whether or not they're symptomatic or whether or not they've been quarantined if they have likely been exposed to other people just common sense and you know every day it, Senator Hagan said she was happy with the CDC's uh, protocol and the day later the CDC allowed a woman who was symptomatic to get back on a plane and travel on a commercial airliner that then had five more segments just common sense, because people are worried about our safety and security. I think it makes sense for us to, to uh, I don't think there will be a widespread Ebola outbreak in the country, but I do think that there can be more cases like this, and, and people could react, uh, and, and we, what we want to do is make them feel secure that the government is taking care of these problems. Well, we've got some tweets this morning, uh, a number of them about gay marriage, certainly, uh, you know, a big topic, a hot topic these days. Uh, where do you still stand on the issue? Now the Supreme Court's kind of like laying off, and, and now that it's, you know, kind of being recognized across the country, where do you stand? Well, the, the voters of North Carolina, 60% of them that voted, voted to have that in the, that in the Constitution, mm -hmm. definition of traditional marriage and we'll play it out through the courts our attorney I signed an, or I swore an oath to defend the laws of North Carolina right now it's a law it's my obligation particularly since the attorney general has failed his obligation to at least see it through the courts Let's talk about uh, women. Women, you know, certainly one of the largest group of North Carolina voters. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, we'll get specifically to some of the ads here in just a minute, but certainly one of the things that the uh, Hagan campaign has brought to the forefront, saying that you are against women, that you voted for different things that, that hurt, you know, that negatively impact women yeah. in our state. Uh, would you like to address that? I know that you say part of that is just a fact check error in general. Well, it is. I mean, if you take a look at the last six years, women are disproportionately out of work. Minorities are disproportionately out of work. Uh, we've worked very hard to create an environment in North Carolina that's putting people back to work, men, women, minorities. You know, it, it, I think it's, it's this false narrative that the Democrats have used across the country, but my wife, uh, my daughter, my mother, my sisters, I had a very strong grandmother who raised two children. My grandfather died when my father was two. She was in the middle of the Depression raising two children, for someone to use this, why, why not focus on what you've done? Mm -hmm. Why not tell us what you're proud of? Tell us that you voted for the president 96% of the time because you think President Obama's policies are great for the nation. I don't think that women and minorities, if they look at where they are economically today, 
are better off, they're worse off since Senator Hagan's been senator and since President Obama's been president. All right, so I want to talk about those ads. Now we're finally here with this. Uh, you know, a lot of negative ads, no question about it. You can see some of them as we run them. Uh, you know, they're, they're all the time. I was at the gym the other day. We have 16 monitors. Yeah. At one point, half of them were taken up with a negative ad about, you know, you or, or your, yeah. uh, you know, opposition. So so how do you feel about that? As Let's, let's listen to this first. I want to, I want to play uh, some sound bites, some folks uh, that I think, you know, maybe are a little fed up with the ads. Have a listen. I'd like to see a candidate basically speak to what they believe they can do to improve Charlotte. Within 20 minutes of watching TV, I happen to have seen five different commercials. And for me, that's a no-go because it's all of this trite Democrat versus Republican oversimplified attacking each other. The kids are tired of Tom Tillis and Kay Hagan's campaigns. They, all they hear is the negative and there's just, we don't even really know what they stand for. So what do you say to those folks that are just, they see this bombardment of negative ads? I agree. Most of them are being paid for by third party groups that we have no control over. I wish that we could just have ads that speak on the issues. Mm -hmm. Give Senator Hagan a chance to explain why voting with the president 96% of the time makes sense. Tell us about, you know, why she's for Obamacare. Uh, why she's for regulatory overreach. But, I mean, they, they, you, I, I'd like to see a campaign that was run purely on the issues. I, I would like to be able to spend most of my time talking about the good things we've done in North Carolina for the last three years. But this campaign is going to go down in history as the most expensive in U.S. history, over $103 million. The vast majority of those ads are outside of our control. And I hope that people will take the time to go to my website, votetillis.com, go to Senator Hagan's website, take a look at what we stand for, and ba vote on our, based on our records and our visions for America. We have two very different visions. I wish that that was really all that you saw on TV. Now, you, you, you made that point, and certainly that's what a lot of people are talking about, mm -hmm. right? The fact that so much money is being spent in this campaign, uh, the most in history by, by a lot of counts. Uh, the, that money is coming in. And the significance to you as a candidate, you know, even though it's not being paid for possibly by, by your campaigns, mm -hmm. a lot of people saying, well, that still leaves you beholden to the people who did pay for this. This is politics, right? So everybody kind of expects you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Mm -hmm. So what's the significance to you as a candidate with that much money coming in on your side? or on, you know, Senator Hagan's side. You know, what I find interesting is some of the groups that are uh, putting ads in supporting me know that I'm at odds with them on certain positions. I oppose amnesty. Um, I oppose the Exxon Bank, the, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. These are two big agenda items for them, but I tell them where I stand on the issues. But they know that on the whole, I'm for making the healing the economy and creating jobs. So I've, I've made myself very clear on where I stand, and I did that even when I've been in the legislature. You know, I stood up to the Democratic and Republican establishments, and in spite of that, they elected me a leader after my uh, freshman term and speaker after my sophomore term. But I, I don't feel beholden to anybody but the citizens of North Carolina. We see big hitters coming to town, certainly on both sides. Mm -hmm. uh, Mitt Romney uh, headed here uh, soon. What does that mean to you to have them here and have them on your side? Well, you know, it's uh, I have these how did I get here moments. How, yeah. how can I be on the stage with somebody like Governor Romney or Governor Christie or uh, Senator McCain two weeks ago? Uh, but I think it's an indication, very broad base of support. We've had, we've had the spectrum of senators here from... Mm -hmm. Uh, from the leadership to Ted Cruz and Rand Paul, Mike Lee's coming in this week. We've had Senator Barrasso, Senator Portman, uh, Senator Johnson. It's a real honor mm -hmm. to have that broad base of support. All right, we have uh, just a minute or two here before our time with you is up. Mm -hmm. I would have to say we've gotten lots of uh, you know tweets in and things this morning and, and buzz around the newsroom. And one of the number one questions that outside of politics people have for you mm -hmm. Where does the H come from, and how many times before you started running from office were you called Thom? <laughs> <laughs> well, when everybody do does that, I say, yeah, just like Thom McCann and Thomas. Uh, <laughs> right. I, d I actually started spelling my name with an H back when I was probably about 19 years old. Oh. I grew up as a Tommy, and then my father's name was Tom without an H, and so I decided, you know, like filing to be a Republican or registering to be a Republican in a family full of Democrats, I just always was a little bit independent. 
But yeah, I do get farm from time. <laughs> Actually, guy, I was checked into a hotel a, a few months ago, and a guy called me Thor. He misread it. Oh, I said yes. That's, that's, a that's, yeah. that's good. Uh, so, so I mean, you're you're in the home stretch. We talked about that eight days ago. Uh, what's a typical day look like? You get up at what time? You go to bed at what time? How much sleep you get, and that kind of stuff. They're about eighteen hour days. Wow. Uh, you know, up early in the morning and traveling all over the state, uh, and it's been that way for several months. Mm -hmm. And. And it, it uh, in, in the legislature, though, I'm ready for it because the legislature is more or less 14, 16, 18 hour days anyway. So I, I was in proper, I was properly <laughs> trained, trained to do this. Yeah. And a little mountain biking possibly later, huh? Absolutely. Single track. I love going out. The Whitewater Center's got a great track. Mm -hmm. It's actually how I got into politics, trying to get a mountain bike trail built. Tom Tilson, really appreciate the time this morning. Fantastic. I want to mention this. We did reach out to Senator Hagan. She has not uh, returned our calls. Hopefully she'll come on because we certainly enjoyed our visit with you today. Thank appreciate you. you coming I did in. too. Thank you. Thanks, Tom.